Hello Trekkies, must we really choose between Spock or McCoy? Yes, yes, this channel is known as Meditate Like a Jedi, but I am pan geek you -will. You like that? I just made that up. I am pan geek you -will, and sometimes Star Trek offers the best metaphors. Dr. McCoy versus Mr. Spock, emotions versus logic. This is a false choice logical fallacy. It is not just one versus the other, despite what Aristotle might insist. A more accurate choice would be contrivance versus scatteredness. In the middle ground between these two extremes, we would have, we would have something quite different. So let's go back to contrivance versus scatteredness. What if not all spontaneity was created equal? What if not all spontaneity was scattered? What if our spontaneity could be centered? Would that not be the flow state of which we read in the 81 poems of the Tao Te Ching? How could we cultivate that? through a very healthy practice of mindfulness and meditation performed at least once every 12 hours or so. Medita practice mindfulness and meditation effectively, and before you know it, your choices, utterances, and deeds will flow from a place of centered spontaneity. I remember one time I was in um, one of several relationships with a narcissist. Narciss narcissists are just really drawn to neurodivergence. Um, and I, I knew it was time to leave, but I didn't know how to say, you know, what I, I didn't know what to say or how to say it or when to say it. And so my partner was in another room and I was sitting to meditate. And when she walked in, the words just tumbled out of my mouth. That's a wonderful example of centered spontaneity. The intention to, um, to flow and to be gentle and to be kind and to be wise were already there, but the means and the method was provided by centered spontaneity. I look forward to chanting and meditating with you after approximately 30 seconds of housekeeping. This is Lama Jigme Gyatso of the Buddha Joy Meditation School. For more than 30 years, I spent more than eight hours a day studying, practicing, and mastering, and then reverse engineering the teachings and techniques of, e techniques of each sect of Buddhism and Taoism so that you wouldn't have to. Welcome to Meditate Like a Jedi, which is made possible due to the generosity of viewers just like you. This is the source text of Dzogchen known that was composed in the Swat Valley of contemporary uh, Pakistan. Uh, by a fellow known as Prahe Vajra, or in Tibet, Garab Dorje. His text, The Total Space of Vajra Sattva, became the source of all the Dzogchen teachings. Before we jump in, let's take a moment to exercise the neural pathways responsible for empathetic bodhicitta and enthusiastic refuge. Our first recitation is going to be rather literal, and we're going to set it to a book and a chant. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging by relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. These three 
nouns are so useful they've earned the metaphoric nickname the three wish fulfilling jewels and this phrase features in our second recitation which is more concise and more figurative and set to a bookend chant may i liberate all beings by relying on the three jewels may i liberate all beings by relying on the three jewels may i liberate all beings by relying on the three jewels The three jewels don't have to be real, they can be allegorical. Now, together as a team, let us meditate as profoundly as Sokotano on Lothal. As children, our first bicycle most likely had training wheels, and although they were functional, they were terribly clunky. Similarly, this morning's first meditation is also deliciously clunky. During our inhalation, we can silently and mentally recite, perceiving this very turbulent play of mind. During our exhalation, we can silently and mentally recite, relaxing into mind's non-graspable nature. Now let us begin chanting the total space of Vajrasattva, together. I pay homage to the Bhagavan glorious Vajrasattva. Every time Bhagavan is being used, it's a metaphor for uh, the two truths of Nagarjuna, that all that although circumstances can be seen they're not graspable although the physical can be sensual it is also not graspable although the interpersonal can be resounding it is not graspable although the mental can be clear it too is not graspable the total space of Vajrasattva is the ever good and immense ultimate dimension of phenomena being the total pure path that liberates all, it is not a rise or cease, it does not think of anything. We enter this realm simply by noticing and relaxing in harmony with our inhalation and exhalation. Being love and thus thoroughly accomplish, it does not practice great compassion. Being great, the profound qualities of greatness need not be praised. The highest love is not contrived. It is spontaneous and centered. It is a natural part of the architecture of every brain of every complex life form. And we are able to access it effortlessly. Um, 
by conditioning our central nervous system through the practice of mindfulness and meditation. I am just uncoordinated this morning. Vinamana, do not move the authentic condition. Since self originated, wisdom is beyond searching. In liberating itself, it also shows the path of liberation. The path is simple, it takes care of itself. Notice and relax in harmony with inhalation and exhalation, and wisdom and love are an inevitability. The great elements or the Bhagavan that it exists by nature in all beings. However wrongly it may be conceived, liberation originates from oneself and not elsewhere. Just as the inner ear has canals that create vert um, the cause or posture to be self-correcting. So does too does the mechanism, or so too is the mechanism of mindfulness and meditation. Let us now remove the first of two metaphoric training wheels and reduce our contemplative exercise from 12 syllables down to just three. As we inhale, we could silently and mentally recite, notice this, and as we exhale, we could silently and mentally recite, relaxing. There will be times when it feels like our circumstance or our body or our relationships or our mind is trying to beat us up and take our lunch money. When that happens, it can be useful to play with um, mindfulness labels. We do not use these labels to control our circumstance, but to rather transcend our habitual resistance to the present moment, be it interesting, boring, glorious, or grotesque. It does not fall into the trap of perfectionism when we squander all our effort trying to pick the perfect label in the shortest amount of time. <laughs> Life is messy. We were born naked, screaming, and covered in filth. Meditation is also messy. Give yourself permission to have a shallow learning curve at times. If you have just joined us, welcome aboard the moment you have a specific question about Buddhist meditation, Buddhist philosophy, Buddhist chanting, or how to apply them to your life. Simply type your question in great detail in the chat window. Together, the wisdom of greatness is difficult to find. It is realized through Prashan method. Inhalation and exhalation. Noticing and relaxing. Though it could be said to depend on something else, where bliss originates from oneself. Now this is controversial. You don't need a teacher, you don't need a mantra, you don't need a real or imagined etheric entity. The magic, meta, the metaphoric magic of our autonomic nervous system is that it is our ultimate guide if we but listen to it. The great miracle is not difficult, all qualities and capabilities. 
whose total understanding of the authentic condition immediately arises from oneself. How do we access the authentic condition? By relaxing into each exhalation. Meditation is, is relaxing without seeking. In the Dharmata that does not appear visibly, if one actively searches either for the Dhammatra or for something in it, the natural condition will never manifest. The Dharmata or the Dharmakaya are simply metaphors for the mastery of mindfulness in meditation, or awareness and letting go, if you prefer that turn of phrase. The supremely secret reality cannot be heard through the sense of hearing. Likewise, it cannot be expressed by the tongue, not even in the slightest. No more so than you and I could describe the scent of a strawberry or the taste of a watermelon. We, let us now remove the second of two metaphoric trading wheels. Reduce our cont cont contemplative practice from three syllables down to just one. Every time we inhale, we are wired to perceive, thanks to our sympathetic nervous system, and we're, and we're designed, wired to perceive vulnerably, passively, viscerally, and randomly. Therefore, during each inhalation, we could silently and mentally recite the demonstrative pronoun, this. Similarly, during each exhalation, we are... We, during each exhalation, thanks to our parasympathetic nervous system, we're wired to physically relax and mentally release. Therefore, during each exhalation, we could silently and mentally recite the monosyllabic verb ease, which functions as a synonym for relax. Now, obviously, converting ten three-syllable labels to one-syllable labels requires a bit of the old poetic license. When we, when during meditation we experience physical sensations, we could use the we could use the noun form as a label. When we experience their emotional counterparts, we could use the verb feel. When we catch ourselves in a memory, we can work with the preposition then, and we find ourselves in our imagination, we could use the verb dream. The suffering of beings is the bodhicitta, the fully manifest while pervading all, without ever being moved at all by equally just as it reaches of space. As children, on, Sar on Saturday mornings, Saturday afternoons, me and my sister and my mother watch black and white monster movies on the television set. And of course, when we got scary, I would hide my face behind my hands or simply hide behind my mother, allow, hoping the monster would get her before it got me. <laughs> Here, it is being inferred, there is no need to hide from our sufferings. We can notice them with complete vulnerability. We can physically relax 
and thus transcend our resistance to them, stepping further into a much larger world. That which is the equality of all distinctions is conceived fig by figuratively saying it is karma. So using the phrase it is karma as a way to say to relinquish our controlling tendencies can be helpful. Were it really literally under the power of karma, self-originated wisdom would not exist. But fatalism does not serve us well on the path of noticing and relaxing. The causes the vajras the, the causes the vajras or the secondary conditions having never been born it cannot be destroyed. Since it is the Buddha essence that exists from the beginning, the ultimate dimension is not moved by the effort of thought. What if our Buddha nature was simply an Iron Age way of describing our autonomic nervous system, our, our uh, sympathetic nervous system, our parasympathetic nervous system, and the anterior cingulate gyrus, which makes possible mindfulness, meditation, and empathy. Meditative stability is supreme equality. Being real meditative stability is beyond the tyranny of thought. Without applying, without applying thought or purifying in accordance with nature, from thought itself wisdom springs forth. So contrary to the ravings of poo-poo heads, thought Neither perception, nor emotion, nor intention, nor thoughts, nor recollection, nor emotion, I'm sorry, nor imagination are our foes. They are tools. And when we work with them, when we dance with them, we progress rapidly upon the path. So the problem is not the presence of thought, but the tyranny of thought. How do we transcend that? Simple. Um, think ease. Let's see if the uh, paste button's going to work correctly. It isn't. All right, let's jump back. One, two. Let's do the old uh, copy. And paste. Coding the expression gateway to the center, they seek the path by isolating the mind. Maintaining isolation in a secluded place, if we examine well this is conceptual meditation, there ain't no benefit to any form of asceticism. They coined the terms cause and effect, but both virtues and negativities dissolve completely. They say we will get out of this world and nurture supreme complacency in accepting and rejecting. Forgive me for sounding cliche, but what if there was only here 
and only now. And everything else was an illusion. So, when we sit perched upon our zafu, sailed by the winds of what ifs, what if our job is not to argue with them, not to close our eyes like a frightened child, but to simply acknowledge and relax? Attachment and non-attachment are the path of words, and something in the middle is the same like an echo. Happiness and suffering have the same cause, and Vajra is for Lord of Beings. So we're not, our job is not to force ourselves not to be attached. For that would be flirting with aversion itself. Our job is to notice and release and let everything else play out. Attachment, anger, and ignorance arise from the, pa from the path of enlightenment, total booty. The five sense objects of enjoyment, too, are said to be the ornament of the Dharma Data dimension. Neither chasing debauchery nor fleeing, nor, nor chasing asceticism. I'm reminded of a phrase uh, from a sci-fi movie that I'm going to modify. The movie was, that movie was a series called Altered Carbon. I love the first six, uh, season. We are emissaries. We accept what is given. Do not chase, we accept Now, does that mean if someone someone attractive offers you sex and you're in a relationship, you go ahead and break the heart of your partner? Well, empathy wouldn't allow you to do that. Empathy would not allow you to be cruel to any of the parties involved. You might thank someone for the very kind offer, reassure them that they are attractive, and then explain that you're not available. All the while being empathetic to all the parties. Space is beyond the arising of thought, and thought is of his like space. Without attachment from space dedication, one's great in manifest as space. Um, one's, so great him is a reference to the highest uh, enlightenment motivated by universal empathy, universal compassion. We don't have to exhaust ourselves with prayers of carping and supplication. If all we do is practice mindfulness and meditation, everything will take care of itself in the most wonderful way. Through all free equality is the Dharmakaya mastery of awareness and letting go. Like the moon's reflection in water, it cannot be grasped. 
Through the energy manifestation of Samantha Mantra, the Hari Kari of us and consonants are profoundly displayed. Through the on the beautiful ta, the pond, there are many branches. In the sphere of experience of the whole world, the profound voice of the Buddha arises. There's no doubt that some syllables are more powerful than other syllables, but upon this path we rely primarily upon perceiving experience, vulnerably, passively, viscerally, and randomly, and then physically relaxing and mentally releasing it in harmony with our exhalation. Wonderful, the sphere of experience of the moon as is not a place to be found by searching, and like the phenomena of the six senses, it is also not an object we should grasp after. Those who search for it are like the blind reaching for the sky. Any human whose feet are planted solidly upon the earth can reach the skyward with splayed fingers, but they will never pull back any blue. Just as doing so is folly. So is trying to force enlightenment or force comprehension. By noticing and relaxing, we can allow enlightenment to manifest ridiculously quickly, profoundly easily. The gradual path of purity that is higher and higher does not correspond to the nature behind action. Were there really a path to treasures like the bounds of the sky, one would never arrive. Sturgeon's Law remind us that, that 90% of everything is crap, including meditation teachers, and so it should not surprise us that 90% tend to really think that being Rigid, fearful, controlling, elitist, cryptic, competitive, and cruel is a good thing. But there is a minority who instead value being flexible, loving, laid back, egalitarian, lucid, cooperative, and kind. The former just prolong their journey to enlightenment for as long as possible because they love prestige and they love explo exploiting others. The second group try to make it just as easy and swift for others as is possible. Teaching that there is no need for outlines, there is no need for someone to verify our enlightenment or not. I'm reminded of the author of the Song of Enlightenment, Yong Jie Shuan Jue who, in, in his book, he did not say that he went to see the sixth patriarch, that his enlightenment may be verified, but rather that the author of the text visited the sixth period, a patriarch to test the patriarch's enlightenment, which was a playful a shattering of the expectations of the day, the expectation of patriarchy. 
the expectation of disempowerment, which of course reminds me of uh, the first Matrix movie when Neo was conversing with the Oracle in her kitchen. And she explains, being the one is like being in love. No one can tell you, you just know, balls to bone. So our job is not to figure out what level we're at if there is such a thing. Our job is just to make a ha not only practice mindfulness meditation, but master it to the point of practicing it spontaneously, habitually, easily, and effectively. The authentic condition being thus by being shown as it is, it is attained. As it as it is the very essence as manifestation arises from from arises from Madoham all of this. And so you've already been pointed out, you've already been told that uh, we every time we inhale we access our sympathetic nervous system, thus making um vulnerable passive visceral and random perception possible and every time we exhale we're already wired to physically relax and mentally release and that's simply by aligning our intention to cooperate as opposed to bulk uh, those tendencies we rapidly master the buddha's path Time past and time present or the authentic condition that is complete in its own place. Likewise, its path is the same. This is its very nature. There's nothing wrong with recalling the past. There's nothing wrong with spontaneously imagining what the future may hold. As long as we notice and relax, everything is hunky-dory. The universal path that is the same as that is like the moon in the basis of its reflection. As it is the absolute equality of all, it is not realized with a limited view. Welcome to the live stream. The moment you have a specific question about Buddhist chanting, Buddhist meditation, Buddhist philosophy, or how to apply them. Simply type your question in great detail in the chat window. As you inhale, you could silently and mentally recite the demonstrative pronoun this. As you exhale, you could silently and mentally recite the monosyllabic verb is, which functions as a synonym of relax. Present bliss and later bliss of what is directly experienced and what ensues from it. Since they imply the defect of an aspect, one should not rely on them. Let us not chase bliss. The three times are one without distinction. Without past or future, it exists from the beginning. Since all pervaded by the Dharmakaya, that is the mastery of awareness and releases the same. It abides in nature's total greatness. The profundity we Desire is as close as our next breath. 
Finding oneself in the three realms of existence, all is just a name and a magical illusion. Even the great status of a Chakravarti universal king, being a magical illusion is an abode to purify. Whatever circumstances befall us, pleasurable, painful, interesting, boring, uh, or just something to notice and something to relax into, that's it. Nothing more. For those whose attitude depends on time, it is not manifest in time. If one practices with an aspiration without being free, the saying on the characteristic of emptiness applies. Let us, let us transcend our controlling tendencies. Now, this looks like it may need to be adjusted. Okay. It is when totally beyond an aspect, the yogi it dwells in the pathways of buds in the sky, in the essence that never occurred and never originated, where are all phenomena supposed to exist. Whatever we notice during our inhalation, be it external or internal, physical or mental, pleasurable or painful, interesting or boring, glorious or grotesque, whatever we notice when we breathe in, once we relax, release in harmony with our exhalation, all has the same taste of non-graspability. Welcome to the two truths of the conventional and the ultimate. Just as a bird requires both its wings to take to the skies, similarly, you and I require both mindfulness and meditation despite the fool despite the prattlings of the elitists who seek only to confuse you for the sake of making themselves look awesome outer and inner or both the outer is the inner the profound is not an object of understanding not even a part of it existence is only a name the power of mistaken existence thus, we, thus one remains separate from the equality of meditation Just as the map is not actually the terrain, the labels we use for reality are not reality themselves. And it's good to be willing to second guess our own assumptions. In the outer and in a summer, but in the nature of aggregates and sun spaces. Since in, since in the three times no one is ever, ever separate from it, there is no need to ever use the word Samaya. 
Vow keeping is a is only an analog, a pale imitation of morality. The highest morality is simply loving kindness that flows from centered spontaneity. Immovable it is the symbol of the body, unshakable it is wisdom. Not taking hold of anything, it has no self. Not rejecting anything, it is the equality that transcends words. Notwithstanding the notwithstanding what who's and where, although one uses and enjoys arises from oneself, here of males and females the king of equality has never spoken. So let us not be prejudiced. Um, let us have no prejudice. Let us not make distinctions between male and female. Um, Black or white, rich or poor. Um, Asian or Occidental, human or non-human, earthling or non-earthling. Let us simply move forward through life from the place of love's centered spontaneity. That is the effortless byproduct of a healthy practice of mindfulness and meditation. There is no mention of something to accomplish by means of resolute forceful conduct. But it is deemed that possessing the on the part the bliss of magical delusion arises. Since nature cannot be defined in one single way, it appears according to how one looks at it. Even the bliss of the effort and the wish for its manifestation is a great hindrance and defect. Yes, one can manipulate various syllables to create various effects in the body, some even pleasurable. But that whole thing is a trap. In the words of, General, of Admiral Akbar, it's a trap. In all the secondary methods for Bodhi enlightenment, one meditates on the attributes of a tantric object like the moon's reflection on water. But even if something untainted and unattached results, such meditation is like the sphere of experience of an ordinary person. Just because something is difficult does not mean it is effective.
identifying with the body of the great wrathful one archetype, with his body wrathful grimaces as well as attributes, with even the syllable concretely actualized, the authentic condition of the quiescent state is not seen. Just as the top of a palm tree is cropped, and just as a seed is burnt by fire, likewise the dominion of powerful emotions may be prevented as some have taught. All the hundreds and thousands of methods, according to one practice, is bear their specific fruit. But since enlightenment is beyond conceptual characteristics, it is not manifest from these abodes. Enlightenment is never the product of indulging our controlling tendencies, regardless of how lofty we feel our intentions are. Good fortune has a yogi who abides in this indescribable state, for by not discriminating between self and others, the magical illusion of self-perfection manifests. This non-discrimination is not a product of will or uh, contrivance or belief or logic. It is what happens when we spontaneously notice in harmony with our inhalation, relax in harmony with our exhalation. All things being in beings and phenomena take on the same taste of emptiness. Allow me to explain. Every time we relax in harmony with our exhalation, whatever we notice during our previous inhalation could begin to feel as if it was as non-graspable as a vast empty void and so we see that emptiness is a metaphor and that when all things taste of emptiness they are one in nature therefore making discrimination silly now does that mean we'll start making stupid mistakes and confuse doggy do for chocolate no because we'll be guided by centered spontaneity also known as expedient means. As nothing is... Oopsie, did I forget to... Yes, I did. Okay, here we go. As nothing is excluded, it is complete. As nothing is excluded, it is perfectly complete. It is unchanging and remains straight. Boundless like space, it is not a phenomena that depends on something else. We are, our Buddha nature is simply our organic capability to notice, relax, and love. As long as we are alive, we can do those things. The spontaneously existing total bliss arises from one's recognition. 
through the very power power of incomparable wisdom. Reality does not originate from anything else. And the enlightenment of which poets sing is as close as noticing and relaxing. It is easy and difficult, it is difficult because it is easy. It does not manifest directly, but is all-pervading. Not even Vajra Salfa can point it out, but the name saying this is it. This amazing, marvelous energy manifestation is beyond action and equal to space. From the ignorance that, that does not conceptualize anything, it immediately arises within oneself. One of my... So, the late Chagadud Tulku explained that if you're ignorant, if you're as dumb as a doorknob, then Dzogchen is for you. Simply notice and release and accomplish. This is the path equal for all the naturally abides in all beings. But since ordinary people are deluded to defilement, it is like when the doctor has to find the medicine. The defilements, the most popular defilements, are that of superstition and its blind faith as well as pseudo-intellectualism and its need to uh, prove and explain. In the domain of understanding is total bliss, that heads off is like the utterly pure land of haunty. When like coalesces from all sides, the four directions, the intermediate ones above and below are produced. This coalescence is the, the sixth enlightenment factor. I'm simply inhaling, naturally and spontaneously. It's the key to perception. Vulnerable, passive, visceral, and random the bedrock upon which wisdom is built. From the indefinite colors of the rainbow, the features of the five Buddha families manifestly appear. And likewise, the moving particles and unmoving environment, but it is fair superior to the five elements. Just like we discussed in the very beginning of this text. Everything we experience can be fed into the hopper of the coffee grinder of the two truths. Including the five elements of space, wind, 
fire, earth, and water. It is not but in the designations of past, future, and present, understanding that it has no arising nor ceasing, that in self is the integration of the three times in the total state. So whatever birth we perceive as we breathe in is experienced as being quite empty as we relax into the our exhalation. Whatever death we perceive as we breathe in is perceived to be rather empty as we relax into our exhalation. Whatever self, sense of self we perceive as we breathe in is rather quite empty as we relax into our exhalation. Being equal, there is nothing to arrange gradually. Being one, it is beyond dedicating something in a direction. Although the ornaments have accumulated offerings already, since they exist by nature, there is nothing to array. The ultimate practice is simply mindfulness and meditation and its consequential love, centered and spontaneous. Perhaps that is why the Buddha taught in the Dhammapada that better one hour spent in meditation than a lifetime squandered in ritual. Being spontaneously present, it is beyond dedicating, pure from the beginning it is nectar. The twelve sense bases are not to be particularly focused on with special intention. Ignore the ravings of the pseudo-intellectual who ignore Einstein's advice that any educated idiot can make things more complicated, more difficult, and more violent, but that it takes a lot of courage and a little bit of genius to move in the opposite direction. The intention of the mind is the do take two. The intention of the mind, the donor, arrays all through the power of perception. In the city, accomplishment that arises from having seen balance, meditation is perfected. By perceiving with great vulnerability, the external, the internal, the physical, the mental, the pleasurable, the painful, the interesting, the boring, the glorious, and the grotesque. Our pump is primed to notice and relax and realize. Keeping it for an instant is union, experiencing pleasure is samaya, performing the dance movements of method, the union of non-duality is offered. There is no greater offering to entities real or imagined, actual or, arch or archetypical, 
than this essential practice. Giving without holding is the dharmic offering. Being beyond action, all activities are completed. Since long conceptual world wisdom eliminates obstructors, balance meditation without speaking is the mantra. There is no need for ritual. There is no need for visualization. There is no need for mantra. There is no need for invocation. Just notice and relax. Making offerings to the Guru generosity. Take two. Making offerings to the Guru generosity and all the other meritorious deeds. Without the power of detachment and imperturbability become great, great bondage. This imperturbability, how does that work? As we breathe in, we notice what's ever going on externally or internally, delightful or dreadful, peaceful or turbulent. As we exhale, we physically relax and mentally release, and thus imperturbability is tasted. And therefore, that which is expressed in this teaching becomes a skirt when one tries to act towards it. Being thus, if it is conceptualized, it will never be realized. And yet, the pseudo intellectual and the elitist delights and offering explanations that obscure rather than elucidate. Let us seal this morning's practice with a bit of the old loving kindness. May all beings practice of kind communication, conduct, and commerce with spontaneous and uncontrived. 
May everyone be free from misery, may everyone be happy, may no one be separated from the happiness. May everyone have balance from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging freed. If you feel that I have earned it, you could give this live stream a thumbs up. You could even help support this channel. In approximately 10 and a half hours, I would very much like to return to lead today's evening meditation class and group practice. And if you are as geeky as me, this is the way.